Hi, Tony here, welcome to the channel. Now, when I put my Showy Glampster review up a few months ago, there's one question that seems to have been asked quite a lot. Outside of, is it noisy, what's the visor like, all the usual sort of stuff, but quite a few people are interested to know if you can fit a comms unit to this helmet. Now, if you're one of those people, keep watching because I'm gonna take this helmet and I'm gonna fit this Senna 5S comms unit to it. The 5S is a new model in the Senna range, and although it has a lot of the features of the higher price units, things like the new HD speakers, it does retail at just £149. So I thought this would be a perfect thing to partner with the Showy Glampster. Now, I will talk a little bit more about its features and how it works and what it's like a bit later on. But first of all, let's get it fitted into the helmet. So as well as the unit and the owner's manual, you get everything in the box that you need to fit it. You've also got two choices of microphones, plus all the sticky pads and everything else. You've got two options of mount for the helmet, the traditional clamp, or in the box there is a self-adhesive mount which sticks to the side of the helmet. And that can be quite a nice solution for retro-styled helmets like this, but I'm going to go with the traditional clamp. So loosen off the two screws so that you can pull that clamp apart and get a little bit of a gap in there. And then just gently push that between the cheek pad and the helmet shell until it's fully seated. At this point, push the unit into place on the mount before you tighten it up, and that gives you the ability to find the best position for it. Once you've done that, retighten those two screws and you're good to go. One area that makes this helmet easier to fit comms than some others is the fact that it's got a split neck collar. So you've got a nice slot handily placed to be able to run the cables through. I always find it's easier to start routing the cables with the unit mounted, so click that into place and grab the main wiring harness out of the box. You have the plug that plugs into the unit itself, the two HD speakers, and then another lead for the microphone. As I mentioned earlier, the kit comes with both a boom microphone and the wired microphone. As we're fitting this to a full face helmet, I'll just use the wired microphone. And there's room on the chin bar to have the microphone square in the middle. I've always found it's easier to connect the wiring up as you install it because you know exactly what lengths you need. There's a little clip on the main switch, just lift that up, push it firmly in and snap it shut to lock it into place. And then you can tuck all three of the wires very carefully into that gap in the collar. At this point I decided to take the chin sock out just to try and make it a little bit easier to see what's going on with regards to the install. Unpop the cheap pad and put that to one side. Then take the self-adhesive speaker mounts out of the packet that hold the speakers into place. And you can just unpeel those and stick them on the recess in the side of the helmet. Given the lighting setup, it's a bit difficult for me to show that. But just take your time and make sure it's firmly stuck down in the right place. Grab the shorter of the two speaker cables and you can then just place that on the Velcro before moving on to do the same with the other speaker. When you put this one in, run it through underneath the headliner of the helmet and making sure that that cable's out of the way and not snagging on anything else. A little bit a bit fiddly, but you can just pull that through. And once that's through, again, having taken the cheek pad out and stuck your adhesive label on, you can then affix this the same way as you did with the other side, and if the headliner came unpopped, just pop it back in place. Take one of the small adhesive pads and stick that in the chin bar, because that's going to be the mount for your microphone. And once you've pushed that onto the Velcro, which holds it into place, gather up the cable in and neatly tuck that away underneath the cheek pad. And that is the installation done. What I like about the Glampster for fitting these is that split neck collar makes it a really neat solution to be able to run the wiring in. As I said, the 5S is a neat unit and it doesn't stick out too far from the side either. I think it actually works well with this style of helmet. To switch on, press and hold the jog dial and the red button. Hello. On first use, you'll now need to pair your phone, so press and hold the red button until you get this announcement. Phone pairing. Open the Bluetooth connection menu on your phone, look for the Senna 5S and click connect. Your headset is paired. Time to play some music from your phone to check out what those HD speakers sound like. 
rotating the jug dial to control the volume. One, six. A short press on the jog dial stops and restarts the music. At this age. To pair with another headset, press and hold the center dial until this appears. Intercom pairing. Then do the same on your other device to pair. Once paired, the next time you switch the device on, this will happen. Hello. Phone connected. So you can see how quickly it connects to previously paired phones. Goodbye. So there you go. For those of you that are wondering if it is possible to fit a comms unit to the Glampster, there's your answer. Yes, it is. And actually, it's pretty easy to do as well. You've got plenty of room to put the speakers in the indents for the ears. There's not as much room as there are in some other helmets, but with the slimline HD speakers, there was no problem with it. So not only is the 5S easy to fit, it's also nice and small and compact and it's quite feature packed as well. Now it is essentially a replacement for the old SMH5, but they've boosted it up in several areas. So for example, this is running Bluetooth 5, and this is a two-way communicator. This one in particular is designed to work with a passenger or one other rider. Admittedly, it does have a shorter working distance to other models in the range, but it is primarily designed for use with a pillion passenger. As I said, it does come fitted with the new HD speakers, and the HD speakers, I have to say, do sound really good. And because you can connect this up to the center utility, you've got an equalizer that you can work with, so you can change the sound profile on these as well. You can set up voice commands on this. It's got an FM radio as well. But the thing that stands out for me is the little digital display on the outside. Obviously, this display is no good when you're wearing the helmet, so you still get the audio prompts through the speakers. But for other elements, whilst you've not got a helmet on, you're trying to pair with other riders or change the configuration settings and all those sort of bits and pieces when you're not wearing the helmet and you can't really hear very well what's going on inside and I think that's a really good addition it makes it much easier to set things up put the helmet on and away you go there's not very much else I can add I've reviewed the helmet previously if you haven't seen that then I'll put links in the end credits and there should be a card that clicks up right here you can go away and have a look at those reviews I think the 5s is a good comms unit to pair with it it's got its limitations of course if you want to ride in big groups that's not going to work for you. If you want mesh intercom, then that's not going to work for you. Uh, but if you just want a reliable Bluetooth comms unit that will connect to your phone or your sat nav or will connect to your pillion rider, then this does the job. I'll also put a link in the description to the best deal I can find. And all that leaves me to say is until next time, thanks very much for watching. Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.